Hey everyone, Andrew Chelman here with MachineSkills.com. As usual, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube and stay tuned on our website, MachineSkills.com, so you don't miss any free machine tutorials. All right, so in this video, I want to cover some ideas on how I add melodic instruments to my samples. Um, it's a neat way to sort of transition just from a sample beat with a sample and some drums over top to more of a, a developed track with some, uh, some interesting characteristics and just some unique sonic character. Um, so, as usual, there isn't one exact way to do this, but um, I hope that in showing you my way of things, I can hopefully give you some tips and tricks, maybe um, just kind of inspire you to find your own method of doing this. Um, so with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Um, like I usually do, I'm going to show you my track layout, my project layout, as it stands right now. So on group A here, I have um, my sample. If I uh, mute my other groups... Then on group B, I have my drums, so if I head over there, I can play those. So this is where it stands right now. Um, I like how the sample and the drums sort of uh, work together, but I want to add a little bit more. Um, so on my group C here, if I head over there, um, on my first sound slot, I have a sub bass loaded up. So if I go into keyboard mode here, um, you can kind of may have to put some headphones on to hear that, but I have a sub bass loaded up and I want to add this to my project. And you might be wondering, well, do I always use a sub bass? Like what kind of bass do I use for my projects? Well, like you always, it's going to depend on what you're actually working with. So um, in this instance, I think the sub bass kind of sounds good. I can see it working in a lot of instances. It's kind of a simple sound. Um, and it, it probably complements a lot of different projects. Um, but you can also experiment with different acoustic basses as well as um, some maybe sampled electric ones like um, like Native Instruments has released for contact. So feel free to uh, experiment with those different basses and find the best tone that works with your project. Um, but for me, I have this one picked out and I want to figure out how I can add a pattern. Um, so what I'm gonna do is go into keyboard mode here and actually increase my octave. And this is going to make it easier to tell if the, uh, the sounds are actually in pitch. It's a little bit muddy, a little bit hard to tell when you're going in those low octaves, especially with this sub bass. But anyways, I'm just going to play back, maybe mute my drums here. I'm just going to play back my, uh, my project and kind of fiddle around with the bass and find something that uh, sort of works out for me. So just with a little messing around there, I can find that these sounds um, work with those samples. And when I actually play this on the pads, I think of it as shapes. So I kind of have this shape right there laid out in my head. I'm like, this one will work with those samples. What I'm going to do is go back to a lower octave, um, something a little bit more suitable for the bass, and then um, try to figure out a rhythmic pattern with those notes that I just figured out. So again, just messing around right now. find with sub bass, if you have really long drawn out notes, it doesn't sound too good. Um, I usually like to do a little bit of shorter notes and just uh, do more of them rather than just a few long notes. So something like that, um, sounding like it can work with my project. So once I have an idea of the sounds and the rhythm that I want to play, going to make my first pattern here. Just start in the first slot, and I will make it the same length as my first pattern with the sample. Now once all this is set, I'm just going to record my first idea. So here we go. Miss that first note. I'm just going to listen back and make sure um, it sounds all right to me. Now that can work, but um, while it's still fresh in my head, I'm going to make a new pattern here, make that pattern the same length, and record a similar variation to what I did. So. So 
So you can see this is a little bit more, a uh, little bit more developed. A few more notes in there. Um, and that's just a another idea I can use if I don't like it in the end. I can just throw it out. But it's nice to have sort of two similar variations. Um, so between these two patterns, I think I have a general idea of what baseline I want to use. And with that set, I'm going to go back to my group here, and then select my other pattern that has a uh, sort of different uh, different ending to it. So if I go to the middle of here and play it. So um, the bass that I currently recorded doesn't sound good because this pattern switches up at the end. So I'm going to go back to my bass group here, make a new pattern, make this one the same length as usual, and record that. So now we have the different patterns that can match up with the uh, with the sample patterns there. And if you want to keep everything nice and organized, you can call your base patterns like goes with pattern two. So you know that's going to work with my first pattern here. And then if I uh, go back to my first pattern in the sample, um, I can do goes with pattern one, and then call my other one um, variation. So now I can keep all those straight, and when I when it comes time to arrange, it'll be easy to uh, make sure I, I pair the different things that work together. Um, so now I want to always check it in the mix, so I'm going to unmute my drums and then play this. So all that is sounding good. I'm happy with how the bass kind of complements the rest of the track. And once I have that finished, I'm going to move on and maybe add just one more instrument. And so before I started recording this video, I played around with some different instruments. I think I tried electronic piano, um, acoustic piano, um, some saxophone, and I ended up with uh, these horns here. I'm going to go into keyboard mode, and just like I did with the bass, I'm going to just mess around while the track is playing back and hopefully find some notes that sound good. to let's see I want to have a pattern with just the bass so before I record any new instruments I'm going to um, duplicate this pattern and I go right above it so I know um, this is this pattern is a uh, basically a addition to this pattern below it and I'm going to record those horns so let's try see if this works out is a little bit uh, rough with velocities, so I'm going to go back and change it with my mouse here. So there we go, I just added a, a couple of instruments on top of the rest of my project. And it's always a good idea to go in and sort of mix everything together. So on my sub bass here, I added in a side chain compression, and this is linked to the kick drum on my drum group over here. So um, that just ties it together a little bit and makes sure the low frequencies of the kick drum and the sub don't conflict. And um, on my horn here, I don't have anything loaded, but I may um, throw in some reverb just to make everything sit in the mix a little bit nicer. Um, but that is the general idea of how to go about adding these instruments. Um, for me, it's a very uh, very trial and error based process. So it's a lot of just messing around on the pads and figuring out what sounds good. So I hope this video has been helpful. As always, feel free to leave any questions or comments below. I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video.